Blessings to you, my father's children. This is Apostle Darren Farmer, and what a mighty God we serve. The Upper Room Apostolic Cathedral headquarters has been a place of miracles, signs, and wonders. And traditionally, we do Miracle Healing Sunday every fifth Sunday of the month. We've seen blind eyes open. We've seen cancer dried up. We've seen diabetes dried up. And those are just a plethora of the things that we've seen that has been undeniably a sign that God is with us. Well, God has released me to go on a Miracle and Healing Crusade tour. Yes, you've heard it right. A Miracle and Healing Crusade tour. If your church is in need of healing, revival, and awakening, signs, wonders, we want you to contact us at no expense, at no cost, we are planning to travel the world, bringing to you the message of faith that in my name, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Contact us today by calling us at 410-703-0645. Again, that's 410-703-0645. And let's watch God be the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Be blessed of the Lord is our prayer. In the English aspect, and I'm going to uh, do some teaching, preaching, um, probably quite normal to what I do. Deliverance, the action of being rescued or set free. When you deal with it in the Greek, deal with it in the Hebrew, deliverance merely means salvation, redemption, liberation. It means to bring or to hand over. It means to save. Savior, deliver, help, salvation, preserved. If it's not Jesus, cut it off. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the saints' phone will be ringing, and they're and they looking at you like, is your phone ringing? Daughter, that's your phone. <laughs> Deliverance, <laughs> meaning to escape, hear this, or give birth. Now, when we deal with deliverance in the modern church culture, it deals with the departing from sin and or to be delivered meaning um, purging of your demons or things that you're going through to be delivered means that he brought me out of sin. To be delivered means that he, he changed my way of thinking. He changed my walk. He changed my talk. But we miss the part about deliverance, which means to give birth, to bring or to hand over. So... When God delivered you, the devil had to hand you over back to God. <laughs> salvation, redemption, liberation. Salvation, redemption, liberation. To bring or to hand over. To save. To deliver, to help. To preserve. To escape and to give birth. Now I want you to just prophesy this to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God let me escape to give birth. But you gotta make sure you're not talking to somebody that's just passive. You gotta talk to somebody that really understands the prophetic. Tell them, say, hey neighbor. God let me escape what I was in so that I could give birth. Now, that's, that's, hallelujah. Now, to give birth to what? To give birth to a baby? No. To give birth to an infant? No. To give birth to your preaching passion? No. 
to give birth to your prophet, prophetic pastor. You know you want to prophesy to everybody. You know, because I just got a word. I got a, God been dealing with me and he been talking to me. I've been dreaming this and I've been dreaming that. And, you know, because I was at my lunch break and God, and I begin to see two tigers crossing Northern Parkway. And I just want to know, what do the, what do the stripes mean? He was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquities, and by his stripes. That's what they mean. <laughs> Not at all. It is to give birth to the essence and or meaning of who you are. Now, a lot of what we deal with in the church today it's because we don't know who we are. If we knew who we were, can I really preach here? If we knew who we were, we wouldn't be shaken by every wind of doctrine that's blowing through the airwaves. We wouldn't be shaken. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. We wouldn't be shaken, tossed to and fro and our emotions tossed to and fro and and some of what we are dealing with is is almost like the the, the Grecians at one time where they they worshiped the Greek god of intellectualism you can't serve god now i'm not telling you to be dumb i'm not telling you not to go to school i'm not telling you not to get that degree I'm not telling you not to be knowledgeable, but there's some things about serving God that intellect is not a factor. If you allow intellect to be a factor to your servanthood, you will outthink yourself into not serving God. Now, that's just for some of us that are thinkers. Everybody's not a thinker. Everybody's not a thinker. So some people just say one plus one is two. All right, it's two. But then some people say, why is one plus one two? Who told you that one plus one was two? Let me find out for myself if one plus one is two. Let me find out if a one is a one. Now, for those of us that are like that, wave your hand at me. I'm like that. But when you serve God, some of the moments where he's trying to birth something out of you will be in moments where you do not have all of the variables. You don't have all of the factors. You don't have all of the ins and outs. You have to follow him with your eyes closed. We need deliverance. Tell your neighbor, say, we need deliverance. Tell another neighbor, say, I need to be delivered. Now, when you say, I need to be delivered, well, that person needs to be delivered. That so so need to be, she needs to be delivered. What we are, we're really casting judgment. Because that's our church talk of saying that person is tore up from the floor. But when you deal with deliverance in its uh, origin, you deal with the fact that deliverance really has merely nothing to do with what happens in church. Down through the years, we, we, we danced until we were delivered. We shouted until we were delivered. We even had deliverance services where we lay hands on people to be delivered. But to be delivered takes instruction. It takes strategy. And to be delivered is a process. So then all of us need deliverance from the pulpit to the door, from the musician to the usher, from the greeter, y'all ain't saying nothing to me, to the church deacon. Tell your neighbor, all of us need to be delivered. Okay? We all need to escape something to give birth to something we all need for the devil to hand over his legal papers to, per se, possess us to give it over to God for God to take full rulership in our lives. 
Now, to deal with deliverance, you must deal with demons. You must deal with demonic warfare. Now, I don't want you to get nervous. I don't want you to get tight tonight. All of us are dealing with our own demons to some degree and to some level. Now, the ones that are possessed, they seem to be a little bit more easier to deal with. Why? Because it's visible. It can be seen. It has manifested. So now everybody needs to call on Jesus. Now everybody needs to lay hands. But what about the demons that you deal with that cannot be seen? The parts of you that you deal with that, guess what? You can hide with a dance. You can hide with the speaking of the tongue. It's those secret demons that cause for us to be dancing but bound. Shouting but bound. Speaking in tongues but bound. Tell three people down your road, say, I want to be delivered from my own demons tonight. Be seated, please. The Apostle John Eckhart says it this way. He says that many of us need deliverance when we see lacking in the following seven areas. Number one, for my note takers, emotional problems. Number two, mental problems. I know a lot of us that's on that number two. Tell your neighbor, say, you, yeah, you, you're a little crazy too. It ain't just me. You, you, tell, no, 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 no. Find somebody, say, you too, you too, you too. <laughs> Number three. That's why some of y'all be running around here. Ah! I said, Lord, touch them, Lord. They, 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 they halfway crazy, Lord. You all they got, Lord. Touch them. Number three, speech problems. Number four, sexual problems. Number five, addictions. Number six, physical infirmities. Number seven, here's the big one, religious error. You may need deliverance. He writes this, and this is going to be long. We're going to, we're going to move. We're going to shift. Is, is this helping anybody? You may need deliverance. He gives us 110 things. Now, this is no indictment on anybody that's in this house. It's no indictment on your parents. No indictment. Yet some of us children, our parents, I say us because I, I'm still young. Our parents may be in the house. I'm almost 30, but I'm still young. <laughs> And I don't want you to fault your parents. Parents, I don't want you to fault your parents. But these are factual truth and can be proven scripturally. You may need deliverance if, number one, you were conceived in adultery or fornication. This can open up the door for the spirit of lust. Number two. We've got a while to go. Number two. Your parents contemplated an abortion. This can open the door for spirits of rejection, death, and fear. You were given up for adoption. This can open up the door for spirits of rejection, abandonment, and fear of abandonment. You were abandoned by one or more parents. This can open up the door for the spirit of abandonment and fear of abandonment. Number five. You are an orphan. This can open up the door for spirits of rejection and abandonment. You were abused as a child. This can open the door for spirits of rejection, fear, and hurt. Uh, this is going to get really deep, but I have to call these things out 
before we go into our miracle and healing service. You were raped or molested. This can open the door for spirits of lust, shame, and hurt. Your mother had a difficult pregnancy. This can open the door for spirits of fear that enter through trauma. Your mother had a long and hard labor. This can open the door for spirits of fear that enter through trauma. You almost died during the first few years of your life. This can open the door for spirits of death and premature death. You have been chronically ill all of your life. This can open the door for spirits of infirmity and death. You have suffered from being handicapped from a child. This can open the door for spirits of rejection, shame, and fear. You were exposed to pornography early in life. This can open the door to spirits of lust and perversion. You saw something traumatic, such as murder or fatal accident. This can open the door to spirits of death and fear. You grew up in a war zone. This can open this door for spirits of fear and death. You have been ridiculed all your life. This can open the door to spirits of rejection, fear of rejection, and self-rejection. And let me just stop right here. Behind everything, there's a spirit. So it's not just depression, it's the spirit of depression. It's not just rejection, it's the spirit of rejection. It's not just anxiety, it's the spirit of anxiety. Do you hear me? Many of us in the church deal with the spirit of rejection. It stunts us because sometimes our mind will play tricks on us and have us to think that what is not rejection is rejection. And we can break away from people, family members, pastors, bishops who had our best interests at heart. But because we were possessed by the spirit of rejection, we in turn rejected what was meant to help us. Don't clap yet. I'm going to give you a space to clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. I want you to put this out in the atmosphere. Say, I renounce. The spirit of rejection. rejection. Off of my children. Off of my marriage. Off of my life. Off of my body. Off of my money. Because sometimes you'll make money decisions based on not wanting to be rejected. Some of us married people that we had no business marrying based on not being rejected. The problem with rejection is you never find out who you are. I've gotten to the point where I say, Lord, if they're going to reject me, push the eject button, reject me. If I have God, That's all that I need. So you need to say, if I have God, if I have God, if I have God, that's all I need. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip through because we got, we got a ways to go. You have been diagnosed as a manic depressant or schizophrenic. This can open the door to spirits of rejection, rebellion. And a root of bitterness. You have had learning disabilities. This can open the door to rejection and fear. You have been incarcerated. This can open the door to spirits of rejection, shame, 
and depression. Your parents were alcoholics. This can open the door to spirits of rejection and shame. Your parents went through a divorce and or separation. This can open the door to spirits of rejection and shame. Your parents argued and fought in the home. This can open the door to spirits of confusion and fear. You're angry or bitter with your parents, brothers or sisters. This can open the door to spirits of anger and bitterness. Here we go. You were exposed to drugs at an early age. Weed is a drug. Thank you, Jesus. Some of y'all quiet because some of y'all still puff, puff, passing that blunt and rolling up. This can open the door to rebellion and witchcraft. Now, when you deal with witchcraft, you must first understand that witches is not some deep mystery. It originated by people learning how to use the elements of the world to their advantage. Which is mind control. It falls along with that mind control. And that mind control, I love the old church. I came up in the old church. But the old church specialized in witchcraft called mind control. And if we can't control your mind, then you're a demon. No, you're a demon because any man that wants to control another man's mind is demonic. Oh, I dare you tell three people say the devil is a liar won't have my mind control my mind be seated please control my mind control what i'm doing in my own house controlling what i'm eating controlling how i'm having sex control y'all don't want to talk to me in here tonight controlling what i wear controlling my emotions the devil is a liar and I'm anybody that's streaming, anybody in the house, if you belong to a church that specializes in mind control, run. Because it's not God. When pastors preach the word to manipulate it, to control your mind, it's not God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Whom the Son sets free is free free indeed. There's now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. How are you going to condemn me when Christ won't even condemn me? Witchcraft, witchcraft, witchcraft. Sometimes you think witchcraft is, is, is people uh, uh, gathering around a Ouija board. That's witchcraft. Sometimes you think witchcraft is just people playing with tarot cards. That is witchcraft. Sometimes you think witchcraft is just people going to get their palm read. That is witchcraft. But witchcraft, on its most sneakiest attack, is the witchcraft that you see that says, praise the Lord and speak in a tongue. The witchcraft that you, that, that's why I'm, 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 I'm concerned. I, I, I get a little afraid sometimes when we got everybody that wants to be prayer warriors. Because cause if you pray war for me, you'll pray war against me. Lord, don't, don't, don't let this happen for him. And Lord, shut them down. And Lord, do, do this. And Lord, do that. How in the world are cursings and blessings going to come out of the same mouth? And sometimes you got to be careful because sometimes the, the witchcraft that happens may not be as, as wide in the open. Sometimes people can be praying on your marriage. And it doesn't mean they got to go down their knees and say, Lord, please don't let it work. It could be things like, Lord, I don't know what's going on over there. 
He act like he just don't love her. That's not God. Wonder why you're dealing with things in your marriage that's rising up out of nowhere. Sometimes you got to check your surroundings. I, 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 I. Be seated, please. You are homosexual or lesbian. Or you were introduced to these lifestyles. This can open the door to lust and perversion. You have a history of sexual perversion. This can be a manifestation of spirits of lust and perversion. You have been accident and accidents or your life is prone to accidents. This could be a sign of a curse. You have a history of poverty in your family. This can be a manifestation, listen, everything is a spirit. Behind everything is a spirit. Of the spirit of poverty. You have engaged in a lifestyle of cheating or theft. This can be a manifestation of spirits of lying and deceit. You are or have been a chronic gambler. This can be a manifestation of spirits of lust and addiction. You do know the saints don't bet. I didn't get no amens nowhere. I said the saints don't bet on football games. The saints don't bet on basketball games. Praise the Lord! If we're going to bet, let's bet on how many people can live holy. Oh, boy, I'd be rich. <laughs> I'm almost done. You are addicted to alcohol, drugs, nicotine, or food. Or food. Or food. Or food. Watch this. This can open the door to spirits of lust and addiction. You're addicted to alcohol, drugs, nicotine. This can open up the door of addiction or gluttony. You do know why you judge the homosexual every time you pick up that fork and you're already full. You are in sin. Somebody said, forgive me, Lord. When the chicken is right, I said, Lord, your blood still covers. Let me go back for another wing in Jesus' name. Watch this. You are afraid of being alone. This can manifest into spirits of fear. Watch this. You're afraid to leave the house. That's why we got to be careful when we adopt statements from the world. Focus, you know, because I'm introvert. You know, I'm an introvert. I'm I, I, I don't like dealing with nobody. You know, I like to just mind my business. You got to be careful with that. Because it can bring spirits of fear. Watch this. You are intensely jealous of others. This can be a manifestation of spirits of jealousy and or schizophrenia. Watch this. You were ever involved with the occult. This can open the door to spirits of witchcraft and the occult. You have a history of Freemasonry in your family. This can open the door to spirits of witchcraft and the occult. You have attended a seance. This can open the door to spirits of witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and the occult. Now, can I preach please tonight? Where are all of my preachers, teachers, members that told me that when 
a particular rapper came to do a gospel album that he was the new age Paul and or Peter and that God was using him more than he was using the church when this man just did a concert in Chicago and had fire burning down the church and the cross while they were seancing and chanting his dead mother's name to bring her spirit back into the atmosphere. Where are they at? Where are they? Where are they? Paul says if any man or angel preach another gospel than this, let him be a curse. You got to be careful by what is inspiring and influencing the world at large. Because nine times out of ten, if the world is going with it, then God is against it. Somebody just put that in the atmosphere. Say, God is against that. God is against that. God is. No, 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 no. Say it one more time. Put it in the atmosphere and say, God is against that. God. God is against that. God is against. Oh, God. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Tell the people, say, God is against it. God is against it. God is against it. No, no, no. Get it down your road. Say, God is against it. God. God is against that. God is against the demonic activity. God is against the witches and the warlocks. God is against the mind control. God is against the witchcraft. God is against the zodiac signs. I know you think you're Leo and Virgo. I don't even know who they are. I know you think you're Sagittarius, you know. I was born, I'm a Leo. The devil is a liar. God ain't in none of that. You are part of the kingdom. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Somebody clap your hands in this house and shout, go, shanda. I said, open your mouth in here. Clap your hands like you're sanctified and shout, I'm on God's side. I'm on. Hallelujah. No, no, y'all did it, but I need you to do it with some apostolic authority and put a praise in the atmosphere and say, I'm on God's side. I'm on God's side. I'm not identified by a zodiac shine. I'm identified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when I see the blood, I will pass or let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I want to know, can I get just about 20 people in the atmosphere right now that would begin to put a praise in the atmosphere and say, devil, we rebuke you now. We rebuke you now. We rebuke Hallelujah. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Divination and witchcraft and sorcery. He says you are attracted and to and or have gone to readers, advisors, and psychics. This opens the door to spirits of divination and witchcraft. You were involved in, watch this please, the martial arts. This can open the door to spirits of mind control witchcraft and the occult you were involved in yoga I know there's a new trend going around everybody is yoga in yawahawa yawahawa it brings me peace to who I am I put it in my drink every morning and I have a great day the devil is a liar y'all don't want to say nothing in here you don't have to you do yoga if you learn how to put that pigtail that hog mark that chitlin that pig pig feet down I know we got a whole bunch of people they don't eat pig feet they don't they don't do that they too up it well if you learn how to put them steak that steak that ribeye them barbecue ribs y'all ain't saying nothing to me hallelujah he said that you could have uh, and or transcendental meditation this can open up the door to spirits of mind control you were involved in false religion this can open the door to spirits of religion, spirits of confusion, and spirits of deception. You were involved in an abortion. This can open the door to spirits of murder and guilt. You have gone through a divorce, a separation, or a bad relationship. This can open the door to spirits of hurt, control, and rejection. You have 
have chronic headaches or mental confusion this can be a manifestation of spirits of mind control and confusion tell your neighbor neighbor you don't need another aspirin of Tylenol you don't need another Motrin you don't need another Advil what you need to do is rebuke mind control lay your hands on your mind and say I bind the spirit of mind control say it again say I bind the spirit of mind control you have you are tormented by nightmares and dreams and bad dreams this can be a manifestation of spirits of fear and torment you have a problem with masturbation this can be the manifestation of spirits of lust masturbation and perversion could I tell you this tonight that even if you deal heavily with the spirit of lust when you get married that is not the answer to the solution you can be you can be lustful single and get married and the spirit doubles itself y'all ain't saying nothing to me in fact often time when you deal with adultery it has little to do with the man or woman being a cheater it has all to do with lust and the way lust works is I want what I want when I want it I won't stop until I get it could I tell you something tonight I want to know is that 10 people that could put it in the atmosphere and say we come against the spirit of lust tonight no you got to say it louder like you mean it put it in the atmosphere and say I come against the spirit of lust I come against y'all ain't saying nothing against the spirit of perversion you have been tattooed and though you have multiple piercings this can be a manifestation of spirits of rejection and rebellion you gossip you slander and murmur constantly this can be the manifestation of spirits of jealousy and rebellion you have attempted suicide or thought of killing yourself this can be a manifestation of spirits of rejection self rejection suicide and rebellion here's a big one that we gotta face in the church today you desire constant attention that is a spirit tell your neighbor that's a spirit that's a spirit this can be a manifestation of the spirit of rejection tell your neighbor say I don't have to be seen to serve God tell them say I don't have to have attention to serve God y'all ain't saying nothing to me tell your neighbor say I don't have to be seen I don't I don't have to be seen because he who prays in secret your father will reward you openly tell your neighbor say you desire too much attention you want you you constantly backslide and or leave the church this can be a manifestation of double mindedness you go from church to church and this includes searching on Facebook from ministry to ministry you can be suffering from the manifestation of the spirit of double mindedness you have a problem letting go of the past this can be a manifestation of unforgiveness and bitterness and I want to stop right here for a moment in the word to let you know that what God wants to do through you is going to require for you to let go of what they did it's going to require for you to have forgiveness in your heart tell your neighbor say hey neighbor I got a word from the Lord tell them say God told me to tell you to let it go so what your father left you so what your mother left y'all ain't saying nothing God said I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you how long are you gonna wallow in unforgiveness how long are you gonna wallow in the fact that that bishop did you wrong that pastor did you wrong tell your neighbor get over it I got to escape to give birth tell them say get over it get over it get over it no you ain't tapping nobody 
I said, tap three people down your row. Say, get over it and move on. If they don't like you, so what? If they're lying on you, so what? If they don't like your husband, so what? If God be for you, who can be? Somebody clap your hands and shout glory in here tonight. Hallelujah. You have had miscarriages and door. You are bearing this can open the door to spirits of infirmity and barrenness. You are an asthmatic and you have sinus problems and door. Epilepsy. This can open the door to spirits of infirmity. You were dedicated, listen to this, you were dedicated to the devil at an early age. This can open the door to spirits of witchcraft and death. You cannot rest at night. You have insomnia. This can be the manifestation of the spirits of restlessness and torment and insomnia. You are lazy, slothful, slothful and unorganized. This can be the manifestation of spirits of rejection and double-mindedness. You hate bathing? You don't want to wash up? Y'all quiet around here right now. Some I know some of y'all don't like bathing because when the cleaning crew come through, they say, Pastor, who in the world didn't been in here? We smell cheese steaks and onions and onion rings. Uh, hallelujah uh, you hate bathing uh, and keeping yourself clean this uh, can be uh, the manifestation uh, of unclean spirits uh, you are here we go uh, here we go are y'all listening tonight uh, this is a new wave that we see happening uh, you are addicted to exercising uh, and dieting everybody is posting pictures in the gym uh, everybody uh, is talking about their green slushies and smoothies and uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, this can be the manifestation uh, of spirits of rejection uh, and self-rejection. Uh, you feel ugly. You feel uh, unattractive. This uh, can be uh, the manifestations of spirits uh, of rejection. Here we go. Uh, you have a hard time believing that God loves you. Uh, this uh, can be the manifestation uh, of spirits of rejection uh, and self-rejection uh, and doubt and unbelief. Uh, I want to know something tonight. Uh, Could I just get 10 people uh, to put it in the atmosphere uh, and say, God loves me. Uh, God, they say it one more time. Uh, say, God loves me. Uh, it doesn't matter what I've done. God loves me. Uh, it doesn't matter where I've been. God loves me. Uh, Grab somebody by the hand uh, that you came to church with tonight uh, and shake their hand a while uh, and look in their eyes with your mask on uh, and say, hey, neighbor, uh, I got a word from the Lord. Uh, Tell them, say, it doesn't matter the mistakes that you've made. Uh, Tell them, say, you ought to pray is God right now because he loves you beyond your mishap he loves you beyond your failure he loves you I'm preaching to somebody tonight I dare you to put a praise in the atmosphere with everything in your being come on up a room lift your hands open your mouth and shout God loves me uh, hallelujah uh, hallelujah uh, you are afraid uh, you have blasphemed uh, you are constantly thinking thoughts uh, that are blasphemous uh, against the Holy Ghost uh, this uh, can be the manifestation uh, of blasphemy uh, you have desired to be naked uh, and expose your body uh, y'all don't want to talk in here tonight uh, sometimes I ask first lady uh, what in the world why are women dressing the way women are dressing boobs down to your knees y'all ain't saying nothing in here butt out, thighs out arms out baby that's not how you get a husband the word says he that findeth a good thing the women are quiet I said the women are quiet when you desire to expose your body this can be a sign of 
demonization. Tell your neighbor, say, it's of the devil, it's of the devil. It's a, I'm not telling you that when you go on a date night with your spouse that you can't have a little something showing. I'm not telling you that. Won't you be holier than thou with a turtleneck on and everything covered. You show your spouse off a little something or a little something. But how in the world do you come into church as a saved, sanctified woman and everything is everywhere? How I wish I could talk in here tonight. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you do it? He says, you hate children or you hate babies. This can be a manifestation of hatred and rejection. I'm almost done. Here are the last things I want you to be mindful of as we dive into miracle and healing. The first thing is that you must be careful of your adulthood act. Just because you are grown does not mean that you cannot have boundaries. Just because you are grown doesn't mean you do what you want to do when you want to do it. Because you can be grown and on your way to a burning hell. You got to be careful of the active participation in sin, including alcohol, including drugs, including sexual sin sin, including the involvement of an occult system. This leaves room for demons to enter. I know what you're saying. I know. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Lord, well, Paul said that wine was good for the stomach's sake. Ain't nothing wrong with a little wine here or there. Ain't nothing wrong with going down to euphoria. Ain't nothing wrong with going down to the north and smoke on a few bombs but the devil is a liar you are opening door for the y'all ain't saying nothing for demonic activity he said watch the books and literature that you read the music and the movie every movie you cannot watch every music all music you cannot listen to all the books you cannot read all literature you cannot read all Facebook statuses you cannot read all in- y'all don't want me to preach all Instagram picture you cannot like y'all ain't saying nothing to me hallelujah he said you got to be careful of the, your childhood because the majority of demons seem to enter during childhood if you would confess tonight in my closing that every demon that you struggle with in secret did not hit your life right now you struggle with it since you were a child. Y'all don't want to be real in here tonight up around. I dare you tell your neighbor, neighbor, now it's time to deal with my childhood. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Find somebody that wants to be real tonight and tell them, say, hey neighbor, now's the time to deal with my childhood. Tell them, say, hey neighbor, I didn't ask to be touched. Tell them, say, hey, neighbor, I didn't ask to be violated. Tell them, say, hey, neighbor, I didn't ask to be introduced to pornography. You ain't talking to nobody. Grab somebody by the hand and say, hey, neighbor. Tell them, say, I didn't ask for what I'm in. Tell them, say, but God promised me that he would deliver me out of what I'm in. Tell them, say, it's not my fault. What I mean, uh, tell them, say, I walked in uh, on my cousin that was watching porn. Uh, I didn't ask to see her. Uh, I didn't ask to be gay. Uh, Y'all ain't talking in here. Uh, I didn't ask to be on drugs. Uh, but tell your neighbor, uh, tell them, say, I got a word from the Lord. Uh, tell them, say, God said, uh, if you give it over to me, uh, I'll deliver you uh, so you can give birth. Uh, I dare you to clap your hand, open your mouth, and shout glory to God. 
I said, shout glory to God. I said, shout glory to God. I said, shout glory until your family comes. Shout glory until until you feel the power of the Lord in your bones tonight. Clap your hands like the devil is in between and shout I got the victory you ain't shouting I said preach it a while and say I got the victory over my childhood I got the victory over the curses that were placed over my family I y'all ain't preaching open your mouth look at your neighbor and say hey neighbor say I I got a word you got to preach it a while point your finger in their face tonight and say hey neighbor I I got a word that's bubbling in my belly tell them say you are gonna be the last person in your family to deal with the generational curse the last person grab somebody else and say hey neighbor tell them say it stops it stops with me tell them take the spirit of poverty it stops with me say hey neighbor the spirit of masturbation it stops with me you got to find somebody you got to grab somebody that came tonight for healing and grab them by the hand and say neighbor it stops with me tell them save the spirit of rejection it stops with me hey 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 hey. somebody I'm talking to you tonight I heard God say don't go to another psychiatrist don't go to another psychologist he said cast your cares upon me for I care care for you clap your hand open your mouth and shout glory oh glory what I need you to do for the next 10 seconds before I put this in the atmosphere I need you to put a praise on your mouth to break what I'm about to say do it now Put a praise on your mouth, do it. Put a praise on your mouth, do it. Put a... Hallelujah. He said, tell them that what they came for tonight, I'm about to deliver them from soul ties. I'm about to... Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm about to to deliver them from soul ties. You're still tied to that man you have. You're still tied to that woman you have. You're still tied to that job you have. You're still tied to that church you have. But I dare you to grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, right now in the name of Jesus I break the soul tie y'all ain't talking y'all ain't praising I said grab somebody by the hand and say neighbor I break the soul tie 
the soul pie from my ex-husband, the soul pie from my rapist, the soul pie from the organization, the soul pie from the manipulator, the soul pie, yes, the soul pie, the soul pie. The soul time, the soul time. How are soul times formed? They're formed through fornication. They're formed through adultery. They're formed through illegal conversation. I dare you to lift your hand and say, Lord. Break the soul tie. Lord, break the soul tie. Lord, break the soul tie. She's not good for me. Break the soul tie. She's not good for me. Break the soul tie. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. You got to do it like you're sanctified and say, Break it off of my children. Break it off of my marriage. Break it. Yeah. I feel like preaching. Grab somebody by the hand and say, Neighbor. You've been through all of that stuff. But say, neighbor, we got a promise from the Lord. Say, what is that promise? Many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord shall, the Lord, he shall, the Lord, he shall, tell your neighbor, I am delivered, you ain't grabbing them, grab them by the hand, and say neighbor, I, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What are you going to do? With the promise that God gave to David, you gonna lift your hand and say, "I will bless the Lord at all, all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth." I'm done up a room, but I dare you to tell your neighbor, say, "I." Know all of the scripture, but tell them one thing I do know is that he has not brought me this far to leave me. No, no, I don't feel no ways, no ways I am. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be there and I don't believe he brought me this far. Believe me, I don't feel no way time. Oh, Come too far from where I Oh my mama 
Nobody told me had the road. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I dare you to look somebody in the eyes and clap your hand and say, I don't feel no weight. Ah, gone too far from where I started from. Whoa, ho, ho. nobody told me that the road would be there, and I don't believe. Blessings to you, my father's children. This is Apostle Darren Farmer, and what a mighty God we serve. The Upper Room Apostolic Cathedral headquarters has been a place of miracles, signs, and wonders. And traditionally, we do Miracle Healing Sunday every fifth Sunday of the month. We've seen blind eyes open. We've seen cancer dried up. We've seen diabetes dried up. And those are just a plethora of the things that we've seen that has been undeniably a sign that God is with us. Well, God has released me to go on a miracle and healing crusade tour. Yes, you've heard it right. A miracle and healing crusade tour. If your church is in need of healing, revival and awakening, signs, wonders, we want you to contact us at no expense, at no cost, we are planning to travel the world, bringing to you the message of faith that in my name, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Contact us today by calling us at 410-703-0645. Again, that's 410-703-0645. And let's watch God be the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Be blessed of the Lord is our prayer.